It's a great pleasure to be to be in Moscow for the first time in my life, yes, uh, and uh, to be within this community. And also, as uh, Alberto said, uh, uh, we haven't pushed to be invited speakers. Indeed, this is the first time we are invited speakers in our community. But then, uh, yes, uh, although we started as keynote speakers in, uh, in the 90s, uh, in 90 in Paris, and uh, so with uh, Zvi Galil, who could not come, and uh, Al Hao, uh, and, uh, and Esko Yukonen also, together. Okay, so now it's 25 years, and then, and then we, 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 we have to continue the, the work. And, and, uh, okay, so today I will talk about my favorite topics, uh, topic is uh, repeats in strings. Uh, just to start from some basic elements about uh, about uh, repeats, repetitions, and so so we are talking about strings. And uh, a repetition is just something that, uh, as you see here, an example with the a b a a b repeating a certain number of times. A certain number of times can be made more precise. If you, you take the length over the period, the shortest period of the string, here you have a 3.4. So it means that the, st the string, the, the root of the string, or uh, you call it the period of the string, A, B, A, A, B, repeats 3.4 times, okay? So it's a precise definition. So and in real life, you have, we have very few words having uh, this type of exponent. Uh, and you have uh, alpha alpha or entente in French. And, uh, I will distinguish, but this, the, the language is not totally stabilized about that. I will call a repeat is something having an exponent uh, between one and two. Okay, so a repeat is not as strong as a repetition. A repetition, you have consecutive uh, occurrences of the same element, of the same root. Uh, in a repeat, the, the rep you know, the same element repeats, of course, but then not immediately after. So, uh, so but still the notion of exponent is uh, the same. And uh, for instance, in restore, restore, you know, it, for me it's a repeat because the RE occurs at the beginning and the end. Okay, it does not, not in between. And you, you may consider palindromes, but I will not consider palindromes in this. So, repeats, repetitions are something, is a feature that we have in string that is quite important. So if you want to analyze, for instance, you, if you, there are a lot of data you can, you can analyze from the point of view of repetitions or repeats. For instance, if you want to analyze this picture, typically, from uh, architecture in Venice. So you have a repetition, it's clear, no? If you, don't, if you don't understand that there is a repetition, you miss something when you analyze a picture. Or in this one as well, you know, if you want to discuss uh, Warhol's uh, painting about Marilyn, yes, uh, there is a clearly a repetition here, okay? Or this one is more subtle because you have repetitions, but you see the you see, you have the same similar arches. So first of all, they are not exactly the same, so you have approximation. And, and, and uh, you know, when you analyze the picture, you see they are smaller and smaller as far as you go farther and farther. Okay. And, and you have symmetry, and symmetry also between top and bottom, so the reflection in the, in the pool here. Okay, so it's... But you have plenty of repetitions indeed, or, or, or palindromes, or whatever you want in this picture. You have a lot of features. I wanted to show you some repetitions in music also, but then uh, apparently I cannot play music, so... Uh, so and uh, I cannot sing myself, so... Uh, not, not even whistle, so I will avoid that. Sorry. <clears throat> so, what is the motivation to, to study the, all these uh, features in strings? It, 
well, the main motivation is to, to, to put some structure on elements that we have in strings. Because a string is, is a flat structure. It is a sequence of elements. So it's totally flat. But so we need to find, we, putting structure on the string may help understand what's inside, may, may help finding features in the string. And then with that, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, maybe uh, compare strings. You can do a lot of things. And for instance, to answer uh, Pavel's questions uh, uh, and uh, the discussion we had with Alberto as well on that, you know, repetition is an element that you can take into account when you compare strings. You can, you can use this feature in, in build, for instance, you can you build phylogenies uh, using uh, the repetition that you find in strings. Of course, maybe this is, this is not always appropriate, but then it can be used. Well, but, but among the, the motivations to, to look at uh, repetitions, of course, we have pattern matching uh, techniques. Uh, we have also, uh, uh, combinatorics on words, so it's more on the math, mathematical side uh, of the question, but it's also in, uh, important because some uh, algorithms are based on uh, mathematic, mathematical com combinatorics. You have text compression, it's clear that if something repeats, maybe you can save when you want to compress a string. And uh, uh, also from the point of view of application, you have quite a lot. So uh, in uh, biolo biological molecular biology, uh, the notion of uh, satellites, uh, um, uh, uh, tandem repeats and so on is well studied. And uh, in music, in, in pictures and, and so on. Okay. So uh, for, for instance, just a small example. Uh, here, this is uh, an extract from the EMBL database on molecular bi biology. And this is uh, the sequence of uh, the Huntington um, uh, gene. And uh, so, uh, and in this uh, gene, there is a repetition here. I have highlighted this uh, repetition myself. So it is uh, uh, C A. Where is it? Where is it? Where it is? Yes, C A G repeating a certain number of times. Okay, and uh, you know you have uh, some exponent from this uh, C A G repeats uh, repetition, and if the exponent is too large, then the the person um, uh, is likely to have the Huntington disease which is a disease in which you, you lose the, the control of your muscles and eventually you die, of course. And, uh, and, uh, and so, so this, this repeat appears obviously in the, in the protein translation of, of the gene here. You have Q, 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 Q. And so, so uh, uh, if, if you have a, a too large exponent, then it's dramatic for the, the person. So this is a very simple example of, uh, and very specific example of a repetition that should be studied in, in, in genes, in molecular biology. Okay, so I will discuss a few things. So about, uh, first of all, that there are strings in which you have very few repetitions. Then I will uh, uh, discuss a uh, string in which you have repetition and you want to find them, or the maximum number of repetitions, repetitions you can find in, in them. And I will uh, finish by some other uh, topics that are related to repetitions. So first thing that you, you, we have strings in which you have, we have very few repetitions. We can avoid repetition in some sense. And you certainly know, certainly know that uh, uh, in a binary string, you can avoid overlaps. You cannot avoid square with, uh, when you have a binary st a string with, uh, made up with A and Bs. You cannot avoid a square because, uh, well, uh, 
Uh, but if you have three, three symbols, you can avoid squares. So this is old result from one century ago, so more than that. Uh, and this, this is quite easy to, to be proven indeed, because you have, we have two morphisms, two, two substitutions. So, so when you generate, for instance, if you, if you have this, uh, you, if, when you replace 0 by 0, 1, 1 by 1, 0, and you iterate the substitution from 0, you continue and so on, then you get a string satisfying the first condition. There is no overlap. No overlap means that each time you, you take a, a factor, a segment inside this string, and if you, if you consider, uh, well, it's difficult to, to, define, to define an overlap. Yes, if, if, you, if you take uh, the, same seg the same string occurring uh, several times in this uh, string, then the, the two occurrences, they do not overlap. Okay, they can be adjacent, but they do not overlap. Okay, so this is a constraint in this string. And in, in this, uh, when you do the same on, on three letters here, then what you generate here, this is a string with no square. So each time you have the same segment occurring several times, then they not, not only they do not overlap, but they are not adjacent. So this is indeed uh, to be put inside the more general uh, framework, the, and uh, it has been the, uh, a conjecture by De Jean, uh, stated in '72, uh, and uh, it took some time before we 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 got we get uh, the the answer, the final answer to this conjecture. So that gives you, that gives you know how much you can avoid, uh, how much of the repetition that you can avoid in a string. Okay. So for the binary alphabet, we can avoid overlaps. We cannot avoid squares. So this is you know this is the, the limit. So and we say that the repetitive threshold of the binary alphabet is two. For three letters, alphabet of three letters, so we can avoid squares. And can we do better? Indeed, yes, we can do better. We can avoid repetitions having, or repeats, oh sorry. We can avoid, uh, we can avoid uh, repeats having an exponent larger than seven over four. And, and then uh, De Jean stated all the rest for the. So it means that, you know, for, for instance, for the three letter alphabet, you have an infinite string in which you have repeats with exponent 7 over 4, but you don't have any repeat with larger exponent. Okay, infinite string with that. And this 7 over 4 is, you cannot go below it. Okay, so this is. Uh, this is a min-max uh, uh, optimization. Okay, uh, you, see, you see, the proof was not easy. Okay, so this is how much you can avoid in in, in strings. Okay, it's, it's given by uh, De Jean's uh, result. It is not his re her result, but then this is uh, the framework. Okay, now how many square? For instance, we can count things. How many squares can we have in a string? And I would like to show a, a few elements of the proof, uh, of proofs in, in this talk. And one uh, simple uh, element is here on this picture. You know, when you, have to, when, when you want to count the number of squares you have in a string, it's, it's not so easy because we are not counting the number of occurrences, okay? We are counting the number of, of squares that can appear in a given string. So what do we do here? Assume, so first of all, when we consider these squares, we assume that the root of the square is not itself uh, the power of uh, a string, okay, another string. So we say that it is primitively rooted. 
So assume that we have three squares, u, u, v, v, w, w, occurring in the string. Let's consider their rightmost occurrences. Okay? The occurrence that is to the right. Assume that these three, these three occurrences start at the same position. Then we are in this situation. Okay? Now there is a result that says that in this situation, the length of W should be at least the sum of the lengths of U and V. And then it means that U, U is a prefix of W. But if it is a prefix of W, U, U appears later, U appears to the right, which is a contradiction with the fact that I chosen the rightmost occurrences of these three squeeze squares. So the conclusion is that I can have only two squares starting at a given position. So immediately I deduce that the number of squares is no more than 2n, okay? because I have n positions. Okay, this is a very simple proof. There are direct proof of that. And uh, indeed, there is still a conjecture on that, that the number of squares is no more than n, the length of the string. And the, the latest result is by Deza, Franek, and Thierry. And the, 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 the bound they have at the moment is 11 over 6 n. It's far from n. It's closer to 2 n than, than n. Okay. Uh, so this is about the number of squares. Now, if you look at the number of occurrences of square that you have in a string, so it is known that it can be of the order of n log n, okay? especially if you take a very specific string like Fibonacci string. So maybe I don't know. Yes, OK. OK, so um, I will, maybe I will skip this part. It's a bit uh, technical. Yes. Now, I would like to discuss another uh, point, is uh, the notion of a run. A run is, is not a string. A run is an occurrence of uh, repetitions in a string. So, so for instance, here you have this string, which is a repetition, A, B, A, B, repeating a certain number of times. And I am looking at some occurrence of this string in, in a larger text. So we say that this is an occurrence of a run if you cannot extend it, OK? So at the beginning, you cannot extend because this f is different from this b, and to the right, this a is different from this g, OK? <coughs> Starting position of the run is here. The period is this. And sometimes we consider the center. Center is the position of the second period of the run. <coughs> so indeed, uh, a run is an interval of positions that for which the corresponding string satisfies the condition. It is periodic, uh, meaning that the exponent is at least two. Okay. So we have the run here. So for instance, in this string here, we have 10 runs, you see, for instance, we have A, A occurring twice, B, B four times, and so on, okay? We have the, the repetitions here, we have five repetitions, and some of them, they occur more than once, and the total is 10 runs. This notion has been uh, coined by Heliopoulos, Moore, and Smythe, and uh, uh, so I would like to uh, talk about that now. So this is an, another example of a run here. It's not totally a run because it's approximate. You see, it's not, we don't, you don't have the same. It's not uh, completely a repetition, uh, not an exact repetition. Also uh, in paintings uh, by Vialat. Uh, Vialat is always paint, he paints a lot of uh, uh, things with this uh, pattern here, this shape all over. So it's a repetition. So. If you want to analyze that, you have to account for, for repetitions. 
Now, uh, uh, so the question we like to discuss is how many runs can we have in a string? Uh, so in this string, we have seen that we have 10 runs, and, uh, and it has been proven by uh, Roman and Gregory in the, in the room uh, that the number of runs is uh, linear, is bounded by uh, uh, something that is linear in the length of the string. <coughs> and they conjecture that the number of runs is no more than the length of the string. And they gave also some, uh, some numbers on the maximal number of runs that you can have in a string of length n. Okay? And you see on this table that it's always below the length of the string. The conjecture is still open, but there are known bounds about that. Known, uh, I would say, precise bound, because there, there was a bound in the, the original paper by Kolpakov and Kucherov. And this is uh, roughly what, what was known maybe a month ago. Uh, so some uh, upper bounds. And we have two types of upper bound. We have upper bounds in which, uh, so they are in, in papers, you can read them, you can check yourself. And uh, some of the bounds are obtained after uh, a computation. So if you believe that the program is correct, so you can believe in the bound. If, you, if not, so yeah, you can check the program yourself and build your, make, make, make the, the experiment yourself. <coughs> and there are also lower bounds on that. And you see lower bounds are more and more precise. And uh, you see, for instance, the these two results, they differ uh, at the seventh decimal. So it's... Uh, what we can see in this picture, between the, the lower bound here and the, the best upper bound, you know, roughly there is epsilon between them. So from the point of view of applications, and uh, uh, it's clear that we don't care to, to get a, a precise bound. We don't care about, uh, sorry, Roman and Gregory, but then uh, we don't care about your conjecture from the point of view of applications. Of course, but we care from the point of view of combinatorics. So, <coughs> so before getting details about uh, uh, the conjecture and, and that, uh, I, I would like to give another element of proof that is uh, useful in for dealing with runs. And uh, to do it, I will consider cubic runs instead of considering repetitions with exponent at least two. I will consider repetitions with exponent at least three. So I am looking at runs starting with a cube. So, like in this string, you know, in this string we have, you know, A, 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 it's a cube, uh, B, 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 it starts with a cube, or this long one, you know, A, B, A, A, repeating more than three times. Okay. So, <coughs> what we can prove here is that the maximum number of cubic runs in a string is no more than 0.5 n. And we have also a lower bound of 0.4 n. And the proof of the 0.5 n is fairly easy. Uh, but b before going to the proof, uh, you know, I would like to note two things. The first one is that if you look at the number of occurrences of cubes in a string, this number can be of the order of n log n. Okay? So it's, it's very important to look at runs, runs in which you know you, you cannot, occurrences that you cannot extend. 
Okay? If you just look at cubes, you may have n log n time. Because, you know, what, for instance, here, if you look at this example here, we have a, b, a, a repeating a certain number of times. So it gives one cube, a, b, a, a, to the third power. But you have b, a, 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 also is the root of a cube. But it, it well, indeed, this is inside the same run, so why counting it differently? So if you do that, then you may have n log n uh, elements. So this is so. So this is why it's important to count runs and not the number of cubes. Second remark is apparently so the relation between the number of cubes and the number of runs is not clear. You know there might be a relation, but it's not clear. For instance, if you look at this example here, in this one, you know this is uh, a a a, and between the occurrences of a a. I always put a different letter. Okay. So you have in this string you have only one cube, it's A A A, occurring many times. And it occurs indeed uh, roughly n divided by four, n over four. So we have n over four runs and just one cube. In this other example, here, it's a, B, B, A, repeating four times. So we have just have one run, one cubic run here. Okay, this is uh, the whole string. But how many cubes do we have? So we have A, B, B, A to the third power, but we have also B, B, A, A to the third power, and so on. So we have roughly n over four cubes. So you know the, the the relation between the number of cubes and number of runs is is not totally obvious, and so we cannot we cannot go from one to the other easily. Now, how can we prove that the number of cubic runs is maximum number is no more than 0.5 n? So this is uh, quite, um, uh, I would say. Simple, maybe not simple, a straight argument to do that. So assume that we have a, so a run starting with v, v, v. So and v is not itself a power of another string. So you know in this v, 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 all the rotations of v appear. And among the rotation, I can, I can choose the rotation having a w w that is the smallest in the lexicographic order. It's L. Okay. Uh, it's called a, a Linden word, so. and it has some property. The property is that, that it is border-free. You know, if you take a proper prefix, it cannot be a suffix. Okay. This is a known property on Linden words. Now, assume that, well, just wait a minute, uh, for the run, I would like to consider this position here, marked by the bar here, the dashed bar. And I would like to show that this position is unique it cannot be shared with any other run, cubic run. So if I have another run, w, 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 of shorter length, shorter root length, having sharing this same position here, then I have a contradiction immediately because, you know, I will have a suffix of L, of length W, that will be also a prefix of L, of length w, a contradiction. Okay, so I cannot have that. So it means that this position is not shared by any other cubic run. Now, if the run, if the root of the length is, uh, has at least two letters, so I have a second position by choosing, for instance, the largest rotation of uh, v, 
which is share the same property as the Linden words. And then again, this is a position that is not shared with any other run. So for each run, I have two positions that are unique to this run. So it means that the total number of the total number of a cubic run is no more than 0.5 n. Okay. So this is, you know, this is this type of argument that is, well, if you have some practice about Linden words and combinatorics, immediately it's, it's, it becomes uh, obvious that uh, you have you have it. Okay. Okay. So it's so simple, but then this technique does not apply for the ordinary runs, the runs that start with a square. Uh, so, what are the latest news on the number, the maximum number of runs in strings? So I would like to, to report of a new result that uh, has been found recently by uh, Hideo, where is Hideo? Ah, oh, yes. And, and, and uh, colleagues and his group. And this is a new bound of 1.5n. 1.5n, so it's, this is a better bound, the best, sorry, the best bound that we know that is readable. Okay? And not only is readable, that is, uh, the technique is very, seems to be very useful, and my bet is that we have we will have the answer to the runs conjecture by the end of this year certainly and i hope so yes and <coughs> okay so what is the technique there behind this uh, new bound is so i will it's based on linden words you know a linden word is something that it's it's not a power of another string and if you rotate the string, you always get something that is larger in the lexicographic order. Okay. So, so here is an example. I will try to, to show you that uh, show you the, the element of the proof on on some example. Okay, on this example indeed. You know, we have a string here in which we have a certain number of of runs. They start with squares and uh, uh, one is, uh, has an exponent that is larger than, than two is B A B A B, so the exponent 2.5, 2.5, yes. And we, we have, uh, I don't know how many, eight, eight runs in this string. They are all underlined, okay? So, for each run we consider what is called the Linden root, so was uh, coined by uh, Hideo et al. Uh, so I've put the, the Linden root, for instance, for A, so for A, A it's clear it's A, but for A, B, A, A, B, A, the Linden root is A, A, B, okay? If you rotate A, B, A to get the smallest lexicographically uh, string, uh, you get A, A, B, okay? This is a, a Linden word. Okay, so so to uh, we, we, with each run we assign this Linden root, uh, so and we get this picture, and maybe for technical reason, let's put something uh, a symbol that is smaller than any other symbol, uh, so that the whole string becomes a Linden word, uh, and then we have all the Linden roots here. So, what, what is the technique that uh, was used by uh, Hideo et al? Is to consider the Linden tree of the Linden word. Any Linden word can, of length uh, longer than one, uh, one, one letter, can be decomposed in two parts, uh, in two Linden words indeed, uniquely. Okay? Based on this uh, this uh, lemma, oh, well, this is not a lemma. This is based on the statement that we we have here. Okay, and then uh, having that, we of course we can continue the decomposition 
of the uh, Linden words up to the letters. Uh, for instance, for this example, we have this Linden tree here. And for instance, uh, you know the, 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 the whole string is decomposed in two, uh, two parts, it's left part and right part. And the right part is the uh, smallest uh, proper suffix of the string, by definition, yes, in the standard decomposition. So you can decompose everything like that. So in this uh, decomposition, nodes are associated with Linden factors. Okay? If you take a node, for instance, uh, I take this node here, it corresponds to the Linden factor AB, ABB. Okay? And every node corresponds to a Linden factor. But some Linden roots do not correspond to any internal node. It would, be, it would have been easier if all Linden roots would correspond to an internal node, we would have immediately a linear number of uh, Linden roots of length uh, at least uh, more than one. But it's not the case. So, and the genius of the, uh, uh, in, in the paper, the, 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 the hard part of the paper, and this, what is very interesting, that in that case, what they did, they consider the Linden tree, but uh, reversing, swapping A and B. Okay, so you have a Linden tree in which the, you know, instead of having A smaller than B, you have B smaller than A. You have another tree. And in that case, for instance, uh, you see that this AAB here does not correspond to any node in the upper tree. But it corresponds to a node in the lower tree. Of course, it, it should be proven. Okay. Then, if you have that, immediately you can deduce that the number of Linden root long, uh, larger than one, one letter is no more than total number of internal nodes, which is uh, less than 2n. And then you deduce immediately that you have a bound of 2.5n. And then if you work a little bit more, then you can go down to 1.5n this is uh, the result that, that I announced late, uh, before. Okay. So not only this technique shows uh, a new bound, new readable uh, bound, but it gives also, uh, it provides also a new algorithm to, uh, to locate runs. Because uh, uh, you can build the Linden tree fairly easily, because indeed the, lin the Linda tree is similar uh, to the Cartesian tree of the inverse of X array. Sorry to be so technical, but then it's something that is known that it is based on sorting suffixes and so on. So, uh, and, uh, so you can build it, and especially in linear time on an integer alphabet. Uh, and then checking if uh, an internode corresponds to a Linden root, why don't you just... Uh, try to extend. You, have, you, you, you guess it is a root and you try to extend to the left, to the right, and then you see if it generates a square, so if it generates a run. So it can be done in constant time if you can do the extension, left and right, in constant time. And this is a basic technique of uh, longest common extension based on range minimum queries. So it can be done in linear time. So this, you know, you see the advantage of using Linden tree is not only you get a, b a better bound, uh, but also you, you get something efficient in practice to, to find runs. And I would like to add a, a conjecture to, to, to the conjecture of Roman and Gregory. Uh, this one, and if we can prove this one, we, we get the other one, uh, that each string interval contains no more than, no more Linden roots than the length of the interval. And if you look at this uh, example here, 
If I take the interval 2, 3, 4, I have exactly three Linden roots. It's A, AB, and AAB. Okay. Uh, if I take the, ex the interval of length 6, I have 6 exactly. An interval of length 8, I have only 7 here. I don't have the maximum. Okay. Well, if, if, if it is true, then we could study the, uh, the, the string in which you have this maximum number of Linden roots and study their length because, for instance, uh, not all lengths are compatible with this notion. For instance, length two, with length two you cannot have. Uh, you length two you, you have only one. The maximum number of Linden root is one, not two. Okay, five doesn't work also. So we can study this and uh, possibly uh, later prove the, the conjecture. Okay, so this is uh, the picture that we have at the moment, and uh, thanks to Hideo and group to, uh, to have brought this uh, notion of Linden, uh, Linden tree in, in the game. But what was the... Well, b before, before this uh, notion, uh, the other proofs were based on other type of combinatorics on words and not, not so, so easy to, 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 to look at. And <coughs> but the, the broader picture, uh, when we work on this uh, type of thing, so for computing runs, for instance, there is... Uh <coughs> so it is known that we can find runs. It, w it, u it was known before that we can find uh, runs in linear time on integer alphabet, or n log a, log a or log sigma time, uh, Otherwise, and but it can be done also in n log n time uh, on in the uh, equal and equal model, and this n log n time is optimal in this model. This is optimal. I'm not sure I have time to to discuss that, but then um, so this uh, notion of runs is strongly related with the notion of local period. Local period is you take a position and you look at the same string occurring on both sides of the, of the position. Okay? And, and you want the shortest string, non-empty of course, uh, shortest string occurring on both sides. Um, so there is an a n log a time algorithm to compute the local period at any position in a string. And uh, um, what, what is known also is uh, n-log a time algorithm to compute, uh, to compute repeats having an exponent between 1 and 2. <coughs> but not for all the repeats, because we, we can have a quadratic number of them. So we have to select some repeats to, to get this uh, running time. So uh, I will... Uh, Maybe just show you how can we compute the runs in n log n time. We can just divide and conquer the use a divide and conquer uh, technique. So and in that case, so what is important is to f to find runs um, that overlap that uh, the, the the middle of the string. So and so what you have to do is so. <coughs> <coughs> the main work is to compute the, the overlaps, the, the, the runs that overlap the, the middle of the string. So, and so for each period length, potential period length of a, a run, so what you do, we, you, you try to, to see, to extend to the right the, as much as you can the, the, the potential run, and to do that, you know, you have to compute the, the longest uh, prefix of V that appear at some position P, potential period P. And there is a, a known <coughs> table to do that. It's called the prefix table of the string, similar to the border table of a string. And this is a... <coughs> 
This uh, string can be computed in linear time. This is an element, this is not uh, uh, new. I, it was used in uh, Apostolico Giancarlo algorithm. It was a suffix table uh, they, they used to design their uh, Boyemore-like uh, string matching algorithm. Uh, and using this table, so uh, we can do everything easily. Thank you. So we also we extend to the left, same way, using similar table. And then eventually, when you have for each P, so uh, you have to test whether these two lengths, some of these two lengths is larger than is at least P. And then, if it is, then you are you have a run, okay? Okay. So it's a fairly easy uh, algorithm that runs in linear time, just when you consider the concatenation of the two parts of the string, and then eventually it gives the n log n time algorithm. And the precomputation of these two tables can be done in linear time, so no problem for that. <coughs> and then this algorithm is optimal because you can test whether a string contains a square with this algorithm and it is known that in this model you cannot go below n log n. Okay, so uh, I will maybe I will uh, uh, skip uh, yeah, I will skip uh, yeah, 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 yeah I can see, just wait a minute, ah yes, yes, no, no Okay, so now I would like to say a word about the repeats. Okay. Now, when we look at repeats, we look at uh, segments, same segment in a string, that are far apart. They do not overlap, they are not adjacent, but they can be adjacent if you want, but they, they do not overlap. <coughs> so we may have a quadratic number of occurrences of this type of segment in a string. So we have to select. So we have selected those having the maximal exponent. Okay. So they have they are of this form. Okay. They are they are of this form u v u, and of course we want them to be uh, maximal in the sense that this occurrence is maximal that you cannot extend it to the right nor to the left. So you cannot enlarge u, not to the right, not to the left. Uh, this is similar to the notion of maximal pairs considered by Gusfield and considered by Brodal et al. It's uh, similar to what is known as return words. A return word, uv, for instance, here is a return word because after reading uv, you find another occurrence of v, of u, sorry, of u. Uh, it's, it's, so it's related to the notion of closed words. A closed word it is uh, something of this type, u, v, u, in which you have no other occurrences of u in between the two occurrences that we see. And what... So, <coughs> so there are two problems indeed. What is this maximal exponent for all the repeats that you can find in the string? And I assume that the string is overlap free because otherwise you have runs and you can compute the runs and you, you have the maximal exponent. And the second problem is to locate all these uh, repeats. And it can be done in, uh, in linear time in a, on a fixed size alphabet. How do we do that? And this is a, a technique that was used in uh, almost all the algorithm dealing with the repetitions before the technique brought by uh, Hideo et al. Uh, it, it was based on uh, com text compression. Text compression might be useful also to design faster algorithm. Faster algorithm than the divide and conquer uh, technique. Okay? This is an unbalanced, totally unbalanced divide and conquer but it is faster than the balanced divide and conquer. So what is this technique? So we, you know, we have uh, the string, 
And we consider the Ziv Lempel phrases of this string. It means what is the Ziv Lempel uh, uh, phrases here? It means that Zi is the longest uh, string segment starting at this position and that appears before. It appears before. Okay? Uh, so now, if you want to find this UVU, so this U can be inside some ZI. It can even be inside the concatenation of two consecu consecutive ZIs. But it cannot be, we cannot have this situation. ZI cannot be inside U because, you know, because it would not be maximal. We could extend. The die, so it, it would contradict the definition of the die. So we don't have this situation. And then it means that we have to deal only with these two situations. Okay? Much easier. And not only that, but based on the fact that we have a repetitive threshold in strings, based on the alphabet that you have in the string, then when you look for a second occurrence of U before this one that you, the potential occurrence here, you have a bounded context, left context. And this is why, so eventually, of course, we, there are more, more details to, to, be, to be checked, but at the, eventually we get big O of N log A time to, to find all these repeats. So, looking at repeats instead of repetitions, you know, it, 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 the, the, the work is not finished because this is one result among others, but repeats might be more important than indeed that, that repetitions. Uh, so looking at factors having an exponent smaller than two, a uh, big deal. This is, we have selected some repeats in this work, but maybe other uh, uh, properties could be also of, of interest. Now, the second opening also is to look at approximate runs. So, ha, as was mentioned by Alberto, but, uh, it's totally clear that, for instance, if we deal with uh, genomic sequences, exact runs may not be of uh, uh, big importance. It's certainly more appropriate to look at approximate runs. So, the notion of approximate run is not totally stabilized, but then the notion we, we, we had with the Gadi and, and others is, so here, you know, this is what we call an approximate run. Wh why is it approximate? Because if you change th three letters here, you get an exact run. Okay? If you change the letters here, here and here, okay, three three changes and we have uh, an exact run. So there are several notions of, uh, there are, that you can have uh, to define what is an approximate run. But based on this uh, definition, of the smallest number of changes that you allow to get an exact run, so uh, what we call, uh, so we, we can look at the the, the maximal occurrences that you have, also maximal that each time we don't want to, when we look at occurrence, we, want, we, we look at occurrences that you cannot extend to the left or to the right. Okay? And uh, then we have uh, an algorithm running in this time. You know, it's uh, roughly it's n log n time for a fixed k or for fixed n is k squared log k. Okay, if you look at the number of changes. Uh, it uses uh, uh, what is known as uh, kangaroo jumps. I don't know if everybody knows what is a kangaroo jumps, but this is a very, a very nice technique introduced. Um, uh, the first time it was introduced certainly in, in uh, landau vishkin algorithm, if, if I remember well. And then we also use uh, 
uh, suffix trees with LCA query, longer, lowest common ancestor queries, and offer some, some tuning to find the, the maximal uh, uh, occurrences. <coughs> and then we get this, this result. Okay, so, so I have browsed a few questions and uh, I hope you could get, could grab, uh, grab some uh, techniques that are behind the results. Uh, well, the, the work should continue, of course. Uh, so we, uh, about the computing the runs, computing local periods, comp counting uh, runs, counting uh, maximal exponent factors, and so on. Uh, also, you know, the, some of these techniques they extend to gapped palindromes. Uh, gapped palindromes, what are of, of importance also when you when you consider secondary structures of some genomic uh, uh, sequences of RNAs, RNA secondary structures. Uh, among among the questions that we have. Still, so the conjecture of the number of runs is not solved. On the number of square, same. Are they bo less than n? Still, still open. Uh, for the number of of maximal exponent factors, so I have not shown the result, but uh, we have a bound of uh, 2.25 n uh, maximal exponent factors in a string, can we, is it also less than n? It's totally, it's not clear for the moment. We haven't stated the conjecture, though uh, the experiments that we have done show that they are less than n, some limited cases, of course. Uh, we know how to compute the maximal exponent factors occurrences uh, in n log a time. Uh, is it linear on an integer alphabet? Uh, no proof for the moment. For the computation of occurrences of uh, maximal approximate runs, uh, can we get something faster that uh, the result we have is totally not clear? And uh, also, so, what I tried to, sh to show in this talk, it, you know, you have repetition, you have repeats, and the exponent 2 seems to play some role. Uh, I've already discussed with uh, Gregory, and we, we don't agree with the, uh, e e about the, the fact that 2 is a threshold exponent to deal with repetitions and repeats. Uh, and uh, so, is there any it, it, the, the threshold it might, might not be exactly two. For instance, for when you look at q strings with the three letters, you know the repetitive threshold is not two; it is uh, seven over four. So, can we have something similar? It's unclear. And there is uh, some uh, result by uh, uh, Roman Gregory and Pascal Ochem that uh, gives something interesting here. And I would like to finish here. And uh, just my collaborators on, on presented works are, are here. Okay, and I would like to show that I've discussed the no notion of repetitions, but sometimes you should avoid Some repetition should be avoided, okay? Just press play. Just press here, okay. Okay, thank you very much.
questions? Me? So I actually have one. So c c could you please just tell probably a few words on how a computer was used to prove upper bounds on the number of squares and on runs? Yeah, it's on the number of runs that, yes. Uh, what the, we just implemented the, well, this is in the proof, you know, in the proof of the number of runs, the 1.6 N proof. So we distinguish between the uh, uh, runs having a short period that we call micro runs and runs having a large period. And the goal was to, to compute the maximum number of uh, micro runs in a string. And uh, so, and it was done according to each period, each possible period. So we went, I don't know, up to period maybe 30 or more, 50 and so on. And this was done on, it was not done by generating all the strings on the given alphabet. It, it, the, 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 the technique was done independently of the alphabet size, okay, uh, on any alphabet. So, and so, so for instance, uh, uh, what was done in the, in the, in the paper on the 1.6 N bound is we, we can check by, our, our, by, by hand uh, the number of cases when you look at micro runs having a length uh, no more than uh, 10, I guess, or 9 maybe, I don't remember exactly. 9 you can check. There are 60 cases or something like that. So you can do it. But when you, when the, you extend the length of the period, then uh, you need a computer experiment. So, and this experiment is not is just for micro runs. So the, the, the computing, the implementation is not so easy because if you want to go to period up to 30, 50, then you have to use uh, combinatorial uh, elements, uh, combinatorial properties. And we can make mistakes, okay? Yeah. Not only in the programming, uh, uh, also in the, in the in, in the lemma that you use to for the programming, uh, programming. So we believe that we, we haven't, but then you know it's not not always. We, we cannot be sure of that. Yes. Yeah. So A any other? May I ask another question? Do you think it's possible to prove the same bound without a computer? To solve the conjecture without a computer? I guess so, yes. Yeah, I think the technique of uh, Linden tree is very useful because it gives a structure on, on the string, on a part of the string. And you have this, oh, this, this Linden tree can be, uh, is very useful to analyze a uh, lot of elements, but including uh, to analyze runs and squares. So, you know, the, by the way, this, uh, this fact of using two orderings on the alphabet uh, to prove the, the result was already used before to show another more algebraic result on strings. So, and it, it, it comes out of the blue because uh, you have a run. A run is related to the equality of some elements in a string. It is not related to any other, any ordering. You know, you, you have, a, you, you just be able you, to compare string to say these two letters are equal or not equal. And then you can deduce uh, runs. But then introducing an ordering simplifies something. So I guess that the notion of Linda tree uh, is very useful and well, my, my bet is that uh, by the end of the year we, we will know the result. So if there are no other questions, let's thank Maxim once again.